everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So before I get into this tutorial, I just want to do um, a couple of small uh, housekeeping things. As you already noticed here, I've got a, a new iPad. Um, but that isn't to say that my old iPad is, is not good enough for doing artwork. Uh, the reason I upgraded is purely because my old iPad started to have a problem with the touch screen, like it wasn't registering touches. Um, those older iPads are still basically the same as the new one and unless your old iPad is broken, uh, don't bother upgrading. It, it's really not much of a uh, difference. Now I've also improved my microphone setup, so let me know if this sounds any better. And I've also improved my lighting setup, so for the first time I'm filming under 100% artificial lighting. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint this uh, Bali jungle scene with a woman on a swing. And uh, although it looks complicated, it really isn't. Um, hopefully in this video I can show you how I break this down into just a few steps or just a few different layers and uh, turn a complicated scene into something that is really easy and really satisfying to paint. Now I've got the sketch already loaded in and uh, I've also got a color palette and these are just images that I placed in the document here and uh, you can download both of these images for free. Uh, I'll put links in the uh, description. I've got a uh, watercolor paper texture already loaded in. In this case I'm using the St. Petersburg texture uh, but all the brushes I use, all the textures, everything uh, I'll also put links to uh, in the description below. Now I've already studied the scene and there's really only four layers in it. Uh, we've basically got the wall, uh, the palm trees, and the banana trees here. Uh, we have the woman on the swing, right? And then the final layer, the foreground layer, uh, are these leaves here. And uh, it, you know, you could paint each of these things on a different layer, but in order to use less layers and to keep it simple, I'm gonna try to combine everything like that. So I'm gonna start by painting the wall here and on the same layer as the wall, I'm also gonna paint the grass down here uh, and as well as a little bit of the sky. And for that, I'm gonna use uh, this sort of beige color here, these two beige colors. Uh, and then for the grass, I'm gonna use this bluish green color. And for the brush, uh, I'm gonna grab the uh, abstract round brush for that. So I've got the wall, the sky, and the grass down here filled in. And now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to set that layer to multiply. And then I'm going to select this color, this sort of darker khaki color. And uh, using the fine liner pen brush, I'm just going to add some sort of outline detail to the wall. Now just to get a better look at this, I'm going to turn off the sketch for a minute. And uh, because this layer is set to multiply, uh, I can lower the opacity and just set it so I can barely, barely see it there. And uh, I'm going to make another layer. And uh, I'm going to set that one to multiply as well. And I'm going to try to add some shadows on this wall. So I'll grab the abstract round brush again. And I'm just going to go along the wall in a few areas like this. Maybe that's too big. I think I'll use it at a smaller size. And just go along like this. And just sort of go along the edge of some of the patterns. Uh, just to add a little bit more texture to this wall. There we go. And then I can just go to the layers panel for that uh, detail. And uh, lower the opacity of that one. Just so it's sort of in between the outline and then the regular wall color. That looks pretty good. And uh, now I'll turn the sketch back on. And uh, I did this all in three layers here, but I'll merge those together. And those will be the background layer. Just compress them all just to make this a little bit easier to manage. And uh, now I'll make another layer. And on this layer, I'm gonna do the palm fronds uh, and the banana leaves here. And for that, I'm gonna use this uh, sort of bright green color. And I'm gonna use that same bright green color for the palm leaf and the banana. But for the palm leaf, I'm gonna shift it a little bit towards uh, yellow on the stem. Uh, but the banana leaves are really straightforward. I'm just going to use the abstract round and fill those in real quick. And I want to add some line detail to these banana leaves. So I'm going to go to the color picker and just choose a very, very light green. And I'll grab the abstract round or I'll grab the fine liner pen. And uh, maybe at 15% size, I'm just going to add a center line to all of these banana leaves. And then I'm going to add some sort of parallel veins on the side like that. That looks pretty good and I'll turn off the sketch just to uh, get a closer look at that. And I do have some transparency issues but I'll show you how I'm gonna solve that at the uh, end of this tutorial. But I'm happy with the banana leaves and I can move on to the palm leaves. And for those, I'm gonna grab this uh, bright green color again. And I'm gonna do all of that with the fine liner pen but at a little bit of a larger size. And uh, like I said before, I wanna make the stem of these a little bit yellow. So I'm gonna change the color and just shift it towards yellow a little bit and then do the uh, stems real quick. 
And then after that, I'll just shift it back to the uh, green color again and do the uh, leaves like this. And those turned out pretty good, but I think they ended up being too dark. So I'm going to turn off the sketch just so I can get a better look. And uh, I want to isolate those uh, and then change the hue, saturation, and brightness. So I'm going to grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And I'll just sort of roughly sort of go around these palm leaves. I just want to sort of isolate them because they're on the same layer as the banana leaf. And I'm going to go to the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. And I think I'll raise the brightness a little bit and then uh, desaturate them. And uh, that looks a lot better. Before, they were a little bit too dark. Now next, uh, I'm going to turn the sketch back on. And uh, I'm going to do the leaves in the foreground. I'm going to save the, um, the very distant background uh, and the woman on the swing for the uh, very end of this video. So for these leaves, I'll just make a new layer. And then I'm going to grab this sort of dark blue, sort of bluish green color. And then I'll use the abstract round to uh, fill those in real quick. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to address some of the transparency issues. And by that, I mean uh, areas like this where the layers are sort of showing what's going on behind them. And uh, I'm going to use a trick I've covered in several videos, but it's really simple, so I'll just cover it again here. What I'm going to do is go to the layer that I want to make uh, less transparent, and uh, I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And I'll just turn the top one off and select the uh, bottom one, the original one. And I'll go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, and I'll just brighten it out, like totally maxing out the brightness. Now in the Layers panel, you can see uh, it's just created like a white version of the uh, original. And I'll make a few copies. And as you can see, when I make copies, it sort of covers up the background just a little bit more. And I think three is probably enough. I'll merge those together. And now when I turn on the uh, copy here, the colored one, I don't have transparency anymore. And that's because it's lining up perfectly with a white copy of itself. So I'll turn those both on and then merge them together. And I'm going to do the same trick with the uh, banana leaf uh, and the palm leaf layer. Now next, I want to fix a contrast problem that I see here, and it's the leaves in the foreground are sort of disappearing uh, when they overlay on this grass here. So I'm going to fix that by darkening the grass. So I'm going to go to that layer. It's the uh, first layer that we did here. I'm going to grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and then just make a rough selection that sort of covers sort of in the area of the grass. And I'll feather it out quite a bit. I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll really darken the grass just until I can sort of see these leaves in the front a little bit better. And now I need to add some detail to the leaves in the front. So uh, let me turn off the sketch. And uh, you can see that I think I need to grab the water blender here and blend up some of those edges. So I'll grab the water blender. And I'm just going to try to fix that and make sure I'm on the right layer. So I want to fix these areas where my brush stroke overlapped. As well as any voids, I can just sort of blend those out. And now I need to add some shadows. So I think it's better to do this with the sketch off because you can see exactly where you've painted. And uh, as long as I have the layer selected that I want to add shadows to, I can just go to the selection tool, set it to freehand. And uh, I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to try to follow one edge of this leaf. Then I'll follow it back up and just sort of close that selection. And now when I go to hue, saturation, and brightness, I can just sort of lower the brightness just a little bit. And uh, you can see it really brings out that edge there. And I'm going to do that to all the leaves that overlap. And then I'm going to use the water blender to sort of smooth that out a little bit. There we go, those shadows turned out pretty good. And now I want to add some line detail to these. So I'll make a new layer above that. And it doesn't really matter, I guess you can use any kind of dark desaturated green color. And I'm going to grab the fine liner pen. And I'm just going to start by giving each of these leaves a uh, center vein. And then after that, I'm just going to give these uh, sort of parallel uh, veins on the side. And after I've done all those details, uh, I'm going to set that layer to multiply. And then I'll just set the opacity to a level where I can just barely see those, but they're not too overstated. Now next, I want to add the really distant background. And uh, it's really easy to do. Uh, one of the reasons I saved it until the end of this background scene is because uh, it's going to be easier to sort of plan that out if we can see the whole scene. So I'll make a new layer above everything. And I'm just going to select, you know, a light desaturated green color. And I can do all of this with the fine liner pen. 
and I'm just gonna rough out some like maybe tree trunks like this. Uh, I'll throw in a few palm leaves and just make a kind of random scene going on back here, but I'm gonna keep it really loose. And next, I'm gonna go to that layer and I'm gonna move it behind everything. And I'm gonna set the transparency to be extremely, extremely light. Like it's just gonna be barely visible. I think just about like that. I just wanna add the hint that there's sort of something beyond the wall, but it's not important. Uh, so I don't need to do a lot of detail. And next to kind of finish up this background scene, uh, I wanna add a couple of hard edges. So I'll make a new layer above everything and I'll choose a sort of dark gray color like that. And I'm gonna use the fine liner pen at a really, really, really small size. And I'm just gonna go in there and in a few areas, I'm just gonna add an outline, but I'm gonna try not to get too carried away with it. There we go, that looks pretty good. Um, I probably added it in only like 20 different places or something like that. And uh, I'm gonna set that layer to multiply. And again, just like before, I'm gonna sort of set the opacity just so it's visible, just so I can see it, but it's not too overstated. Now the main background scene here is all done and uh, I can kind of uh, consolidate some of these layers. So I wanna make sure that the lines and the background of these uh, foreground leaves uh, are merged together. So now those are on one layer. And then the whole background scene, uh, I'll merge together as well. And uh, I'm also, I'll leave the outlines like this. Uh, so I've just got three layers now, just the uh, hard edges, the foreground leaves, uh, and then the background scene here. And the reason I keep them separate is because the uh, next part where I paint the branch with the woman on the swing, it needs to go between these layers. So I'm gonna turn this sketch back on and I'm gonna make a new layer above everything. And I'm gonna turn off pretty much everything else in the scene just so I can focus on this part. And I'll start by painting the branch with the uh, abstract round and I'll use this kind of brown color. I did a few kind of layers of uh, overlapping strokes because I want there to be this kind of line detail, but you can add any kind of texture to the branch that you want. And uh, now I can move down here to the uh, woman. And I'm gonna start by doing the whole body color. Basically, I'm gonna choose a skin color. And uh, I've covered this in a previous video, but a trick for finding a good skin tone is just sort of find pretty much dead center between sort of red and yellow on the hue slider. And then this area here, this is basically your skin tone line. None, none of the other colors you have to worry about. So for this one, I'm gonna do a kind of medium skin tone and I'm gonna fill out the whole body with the uh, fine liner pen. So that looks pretty good, but the sketch is on. And as soon as I turn the sketch off, uh, you can see there's kind of weird lumpy areas and it's just because the sketch kind of hides that. So the next step here is to just go in there with the eraser brush and just try to smooth this out a little bit. And once you're happy with that, uh, you can go ahead and turn the sketch back on. And uh, I'm gonna do the shorts real quick and I'm gonna do that with the freehand selection tool. So I'm just gonna select it like this and then just sort of follow the sketch like that. I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just adjust this, the brightness and the hue, uh, until I find a uh, kind of a yellowish color, a light yellow. There we go, and then I wanna grab that same color and uh, do the strap on the bra here. And this looks a little bit boring, so I'm gonna use that same color, but I'll make it just a little bit darker, and I'm gonna add some details to the clothes here. And for the legs, um, I want to add some shadows and it's a little bit complicated, but I'm going to do it all with the freehand selection tool. And the first shadow I'm going to add is the swing, casting a shadow on the back of the legs. So I'll do a pretty square shadow like that. And I'll just uh, darken it up using the brightness control. And now I need to add a shadow where the legs are sort of crossing. And this is a little bit more complicated, but I'll do the same thing that I did with the uh, swing shadow. And I'll just make a selection like that and I'll darken it but this time I'm just gonna darken it just a tiny, tiny bit. And uh, I'm gonna turn off the sketch. And uh, for the next shadow here, I'm gonna add a highlight. So I'm gonna grab the freehand selection tool again. And this time I'm gonna select the uh, leg that's closer, just like that. And I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll brighten it, just so I get more contrast without making that sort of unnecessarily dark. And all these shadows, uh, I'll go ahead and smooth out using the water blender. And next I wanna add the hat. And I think I'm gonna use the same color that I did the shorts with. 
and I'll fill that one with the fine liner pen. And I want to add a very slight highlight to the hat. So I'm going to use the freehand selection tool and just make a selection like that. I'll feather it out. I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just brighten it up a little bit. And now I want to make a shadow that uh, the hat is casting on her back. So I'll use the freehand selection tool again and just sort of sketch that one out. And as a, a final shadow, I'm just going to make a kind of long oval shape on her back and I'll feather it out and I'll just darken that up a little bit. And uh, now I can move on to the uh, swing and the rope. So I'll turn the sketch back on and I'm going to do all that on a different layer, but it's going to be underneath the uh, woman here. And I want to do that with a kind of a bright color that stands out. So I think I'll select a kind of bluish green color and I'm going to fill that in with the fine liner pen. And for the ropes, uh, I'm just going to choose, it might be a little bit hard to see, but I think I'll choose a light yellowish gray color and I'll use the fine liner pen as well. And I'll just sketch those on really easily like this, but I think I'll add some kind of dangling ropes like that. And for the long rope, it's really easy. It's just, just do it really slowly and carefully because it doesn't look right if it's kind of uh, wiggly. And uh, if it's too hard to see like this, uh, I really do often uh, turn off the sketch just because sometimes it covers up the uh, small details. Now I want the rope to sort of be wrapped around the tree trunk, but we're underneath that layer. So what I'm gonna do is select a layer above everything. And I'm just gonna go like this, just to uh, add the kind of impression that it's sort of wrapped around the tree trunk. And it does help if I choose a, a little bit of a darker version of that and do a, a few lines of that color. And next I can just go ahead and merge all the layers for that together, uh, just onto one layer. Uh, and then I can move it underneath our foreground leaves and uh, turn everything else back on. Now this looks pretty good, but I have a, another sort of set of transparency issues here. So I'm gonna use the same trick as before to uh, cover that up. So I'll make a duplicate, turn off the uh, copy, and I'll white out the original one using the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. Make a few copies of it. And then I'll just merge those all together. Now in the areas where the outline is sort of overlapping, um, I think it's easier just to erase that. So if you can uh, zoom in here and see that outline, uh, here's the layer with those. And I'm just gonna sort of manually erase those where they uh, don't make sense. Now as a finishing touch, I'll just go ahead and merge everything together and I'm gonna cut it into a square shape. So I'll turn off the color palette and the sketch and I'm just gonna, I think what I'll do is I'll just duplicate it into a square shape. And the way I do that is uh, I'll grab the selection tool and set it to rectangle. And I'm just gonna grab the corner here and just make a selection box that sort of covers all of this. And then I'll go to copy and paste. And basically it cut that out and made it onto a, a different layer. So if I turn off the original, the end result is basically cut into this uh, rectangle shape. And there we go, this one is all done. And uh, I know during this video, I have a kind of lighting problem. Uh, it looks like my uh, LED lights that I used to light my studio now are kind of running out of batteries. So I'll have to find a solution for that. Now, uh, regarding the painting here, uh, as you can see, it, it prints out really nicely. And uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I felt like while I was painting this, um, it does get a little bit difficult to sort of stay on track because this is one of those projects that doesn't really come together until the very last few steps. So uh, don't get discouraged if you start to feel uh, a little bit overwhelmed when you're halfway through this, because I think if you just finish it all the way to the end, uh, you might be really surprised with what you can paint. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.